It's Montreal, Canada's own. It's your boy, Sid. Back, really back, bringing you a whole bunch of hot new content. Welcome to Speak Your Mind all the time. And without further ado, let me drop in my guy. I'm not even, there's no introduction that's needed for this guy. I mean, no introduction at all. Yo, what's up, my guy, man? I don't know if I can follow up with that uh, Lord of the Rings introduction you got, <laughs> man. I felt <laughs> Yeah, so what's going on, my guy, man? Glad to have you back, bro. Yeah, man, one hundred percent. Feel good being back, man. It's, thank you once again, once again for coming on the show, Jay. Uh, before we even go deep into this and we start discussing what's been going, I want to thank you, man, because you've always been one of those guys that no matter what is going on in my crazy life, uh, whether when I left, came back, left, came back, no matter what, you've always been a huge, huge support system. And we've never even met face to face, man. Right. And I feel like like your family to me, man. Like yes. I've always been able to reach out to you and just talk. And uh, no matter what it was, you were always like checking up on me. And I want to thank you for always being that huge, huge support system, man. Yeah, man. I, I I deeply appreciate it. And likewise, man. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand when we start doing this content or whatever you call it that we're doing, man. It's the friendships. That's the thing that means the most to me, to be honest with you. You know, I know that if Sid was to stop making content today and delete his channel, I'm still going to reach out to Sid and say, yo, when you come to Dallas, right? And, and, and the same, right? And that's with other people uh, with Rome and law and DMV. Like, mm. it's more about the relationships, man. And no matter as much uh, as high as I grow, I'll never forget the people who was there from day one and Sid was literally there from day one. So I said that, you know, on a show I did the other day, right. I remember doing these live shows and the only three people watching was my kids. You know what I'm saying? They were upstairs, like just trying to make sure the channel work. Right. So it was my kids in the comments, like, Hey dad, you know what I'm saying? But then there was one time where someone reached out to me and it was just like, I got a comment like, yo, I love your show. I want to work with you. And that was just like, Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? And it was Sid, man. And Sid's responsible for a lot of the relationships, right? I met star gang through Sid. I met West coast through Sid. I met Rome through Sid. I met, uh, like a lot of people through Sid, right? So just partnering with you, bro. So like I said, I'll never forget the people who was there from day one and Sid was there from day one, whether he leaves, comes back, whether it's the only show he does, man, you're always going to be my brother, man. And uh, yeah, we we gonna sit here and complain. I remember, I remember when we did the live show after the watermelon kick, man. When uh, <laughs> we beat the Atlanta Falcons, you know, going through that pandemic season, we beat the watermelon kick, and you know, so it's it like good times, man. So it really takes me back to when things were fun, man. So appreciate you, my guy. No, nah, man, appreciate you too. And big shout out to BJ Nicks and and Rome and all those guys, man. Cowboys fan nineteen eighty, who's gonna be on my show this Friday. Uh, like these are all pioneer guys that I remember we used to do three hour shows. Remember we <laughs> and, 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 and that's what and that's what people don't understand. And I was trying to explain it, you know, even today, right? Because a lot of new content creators, because it, it's big, see, like you come into the game, you're like, who the hell are these people? You know, yeah, yeah. But you know, they've seen the growth that a lot of us has done and they think it just happened overnight, but they don't understand the work and the sacrifice it took behind the scenes. The three hour shows, the four hour shows, we were doing shoes shows back to back to back. I got I got two shows after this one, you know. So they don't see that part they see all the, the 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 glitz and the glam and the players talking to us and interacting with us and going to cowboys game but there was a lot of work behind the scenes a lot of frustrations a lot of sacrifices a lot of late nights yeah. that took place in order for you to see what we're seeing today man so you was definitely there man with us man those late nights is talking for you know five hours six hours seven hours man <laughs> but we were trying to build our brand and build our our, our knowledge when it comes to covering the Dallas Cowboys. We didn't know what we was doing. We never thought, I never thought I was going to get this far, Sid. Um, this is what I, this is not what I imagined when we started back in 2020, but now look, you know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy, man. Like, uh, honestly, it's, it's been a journey for all of us and congratulations to you, man. Like I remember when I first, first reached out to you, I think you had like 200 followers. Yeah. You know that's, I mean? that's what people don't understand. Like I had like, I had 150 like on Twitter you know, I had like, you know, 160 on YouTube. So like, like I said, when Sid was there from the beginning, now, now on Twitter, but it's 40,000, you know, like I can't even, I can't even tweet in peace anymore. So it's kind of crazy, but like, yeah, a lot of people who was there from day one has seen my growth and they're still rocking with me today, man. So I'm definitely appreciative of it. Yeah, man. A hundred percent. And like, like I said, congratulations to you. 
you grind it out. You've always been that pioneer. And no matter what, you you still want to... It takes... What people don't get, and I think you brought this up, is that how much YouTube takes over your life. Mm-hmm. At this point. That's why at one point I had to step away because it was starting to interfere with my personal life. Right. But, yeah. You yeah. Know, and it's hard, you know, and I know when you're going to that situation, man, I was like, listen, family first. And that's for anybody. Family is always going to come first, you know, and you, it does kind of take over you. Right. Because you kind of feel the obligation to your followers and your fan base. Like me, honestly, like I haven't taken a break. See, like I still like oh, I know. Green Bay game. I'm still going. And I always tell myself I'm going to take a break. But then it's like I know that people lean on me for draft coverage and they lean on me for all season. Like I never want to take that for granted. So you can continuously just go, you know, like it's, it's crazy. Like when I went over to Dubai and went over to the Maldives, like I was live streaming, talking to Cowboys fans, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm on the other side of the world talking, you know? So it's like, it's one of those things, but like I said, it's not really about the content or the, the glory that comes with it. It's the people, the relationships, the fan yeah. base that you meet. That's what yep. keeps me going. Cowboys nation, that's that's my motivation. That's my passion. Man, so to my guy JC Cowboys Network, man, he's another one coming up in the game. He's killing it right now. So I'm trying to retire, Sid. I'm trying to retire and <laughs> move on to Green Pastures, man. So I need the, the class to come behind me to come and take over, man. JC, no, that no, 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 that ain't happening. You, <laughs> I just got back into the game. You can't leave right now, man. <laughs> like, Sid is back. All right, I'm out, man. You got the good. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, man. So listen, let's let's. You know, we've covered all that, and you said a big thing, fans and the people that come onto our channels and support. That's a huge thing. Um, like I said, I ended up, I dropped, I went, I lost like 100 followers. And the minute I posted yesterday, I think I already got like 50 new followers within like from yesterday to today. So I just want to thank everybody who's already clicking that subscribe button and seeing that I'm making a comeback. And I appreciate you guys totally. Thanks, man. Definitely give my so, girl a follow, man. Yeah. So with that being said, we have a lot to cover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. Dallas Cowboys front office, to me, has lost their minds. Um, and I watched one of your shows the other day, and I said, oh, my God, he's so right. The Dallas Cowboys going into this season look like a base team. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we look like a mediocre team. Like, we're just... I see it right now, right now. My opinion, and this is my opinion only. Guys, I've always said that. This is speak your mind all the time. This is my opinion, my opinion only. I don't even see us making playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got, I'm keeping it real, y'all. We, mean, what we have, let's who we, you would see who, how many people we let go in Dallas. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's not the let go, Sid. It's the let go and the not replenishing, right? So I don't want to say we're not going to make the playoffs or post-draft. Give me a week, and I'll come back and say, all right, y'all, let's, let's start a book club. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think that's the frustrating part because even as bad as that Green Bay loss was there. Oh, when, man. It was, it was bad. I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it hurt. But I felt like roster-wise – we had the talent to compete. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, it was just a bad day at the office. We got caught slacking green yep. Bay. You know, they just, they just beat our jaws in. Right. So I felt like if you say winning a super bowl, what's up 19, what's going on with you, my guy, if winning a super bowl and have a super bowl roster was a 10, mm. I felt like we were like at a seven and a half, like a 7.5 absent Trayvon Diggs. If Trayvon Diggs would have played, would have probably been like an eight, eight point, mm. eight point mm-hmm. five, Right. Mm-hmm. But then now it's like, I'm feeling like we're a five, Sid, a five and a half. And I'm just trying to get back to that seven and a half we were last year. And I tell Cowboys fans this, if you really want to feel the impact, because, you know, Sid probably won't tell y'all that we, you know, we have these back and forth. If you really <laughs> want to feel the impact of how this roster looks, go play Madden with this current roster. Oh, it's, it's rough. You know what I'm saying? It's rough, man. I ain't got no Tony Pollard. Like, I ain't got no run stoppers. I ain't got no linebackers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, you know, I don't have my other wide receiver and Michael Gallup to go and throw the ag, you know what I'm saying, the ag catch. Like, I'm just, I'm just bleeding out when it comes to this roster. So mm. it puts us in a bad situation because we didn't go into free agency and was actually showed a sense of urgency. So now yeah. it's like we're going to the grocery store hungry, and that's the NFL draft. So you know when you go to the grocery store hungry, you do fitness stuff, or you used to be grabbing stuff. You don't know why you grab it, but I want some cheeses and some cheese dip. Like you just, you know what I'm saying? You're just grabbing random stuff, and I feel like that's where the Cowboys are right now. We have so many holes in our roster 
you might just have to just be grabbing stuff just to grab it because you're trying to fill the void of what we lost in this offseason. And that's not even including our defensive coordinator. Yeah, uh, it's it's that was a hard loss. Um, Tyron Smith, big loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler, Villa, you know, I mean, we could go down the list of mm-hmm. how many players that signed to other teams and we signed Kendricks one. And that, and that was by accident because he was signed with the 49ers. And he <laughs> pulled me back. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if we can count it, salute to Coach Zimmer. You know, Coach Zimmer ha- haven't even unpacked yet. He had to go and step in and at least get us a linebacker back. So, yeah, one outside acquisition, it's it's bad. And I, and I think what hurts Cowboys fans the most is when you look at guys like a Tyron Smith or even a Jonathan Hankins, like what yeah. they've actually went to these opposing teams for contract wise. It's like, bro, we couldn't do that. We lost Jonathan Hankins, our big run stop and defensive tackle for the difference of $500,000. Like, come on, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're just penny pinching at this point, but yes, we are. I'll be talking about it here soon. Stephen Jones talks about the dad contract and the Michael contract. Yep. You see, so he can kind of just blame it. And a lot of Cowboys fans eat that up. But to be honest with you, Sid, we're getting a lot of smarter. You know, we're a lot smarter. We know that's not how things work. We know that you can thin out the contract. We know that you can, you know, spread things out. You can restructure. You can do all these different things to create mm-hmm. cap space if you want to. And right now, are the Dallas Cowboys making the moves to be able to do that? No. And, and like you said, I know you mentioned like not making the playoffs. I don't care about making the playoffs. I'm trying to build a super bowl contender. You know, it's like that. Yeah. That's my problem. Yeah. It's like, so even if we have a decent draft, okay, decent draft, and then we sprinkle in a few extra veteran guys, is that enough for me to go to New Orleans and beat Kansas City or beat the Baltimore Ravens or run through the San Francisco 49ers and the Eagles and the Detroit Lions and the Packers? On like, I don't feel like we have that t- type of team. Now, granted. Super Bowls aren't win in April, but the rosters do make a difference. Like the roster does make a difference. How did the 49ers go to the Super Bowl? It wasn't because they penny pinch. They went out there and was aggressive. They got Christian McCaffrey. Got, they, yep. they, they filled out talent around Brock Purdy, where Brock Purdy doesn't have to do much. And a lot of people say, well, Dak Prescott had plenty of talent. Yeah. But that was last year. I'm talking about this year. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, you know, you strip away his left tackle. You know, you strip away his running back. You strip away his X, Y receiver. And then defensively, you have a new defensive coordinator. You're missing two defensive tackles. Mozzie Smith is having a shoulder surgery. Okay, yep. Might be out four to six weeks. You lose Leighton Vander Esch. You have Overshone coming off of ACL. Damone Clark can't read and react. You might lose some safeties and veteran leaders and J. Ron Kurt. Like, so you're losing that. You, losing. Might, lose, you like- might lose Stephon Gilmore. So it's like, okay, so where's the where's the replenishing? And I think that's where Cowboys fans are really concerned when ultimately they should be. Well, yeah, we definitely got, like, you know, I was speaking to a few people, you know, uh, here in Canada. And, you know, some guys are like, yeah, but we're going to go get people in the draft. I'm like, okay, who? <laughs> we're 24th pick. Are we going to get cream or crop at 24th pick? Yeah, we'll go out and get a few guys here and there. But are we gonna be able to, are we gonna be getting dogs? Those guys that are gonna come out here and make a difference. A lot of these guys are rookies. You can't come. There's a few guys that can step onto the field the first day and make a difference. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's a huge ass, right? Because think about this. If you go back to when we moved on from Mari Cooper, it was so unfair, Sid, to ask Jalen Tobert from South Alabama that okay, you gotta replace Mari Cooper in your rookie season. Like, bro, what? You know, saying like, hold on, hold on, yeah. you know. So now it's like, okay, we can draft the left tackle, whether it's a Jordan Morgan or Troy Fatanu or Kingsley Samadia. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Now go replace Hall of Fame left tackle and Tyron Smith. You got it, kid. You know, like yeah. so <laughs> like you, you gotta hit the ground running, but also here's the bad part about going in with that philosophy. The draft board doesn't give a damn about what your plans are because people can snatch and pull and the draft can just not go in your favor. You can go into the draft with the perfect plan. Oh, yeah, this is our guy. He's at the top of our board. And if we get him, we're yeah. going to be able to execute. And then, nope, the Buffalo Bills just jumped you and take your tight end or the Raiders just jumped you and take your safety. And now you're reaching a little bit. So it's a very bad philosophy to go in to hope that some college kids and some rookies, if you get two two starters out of your draft class consider yourself lucky but we're needing lucky. three maybe four and we saw how last year's draft class you know it was pretty much nobody hit you know so it's like you can have those situations but leaning your cap on oh it's fine we'll, we'll just draft guys and we'll be perfectly fine 
it's a huge it's a huge dice roll and for us cowboys fans we actually deserve more you know what i'm saying Sid, is when you look at the green bay loss who actually paid the price and what did the cowboys do to show what happened versus green bay was not acceptable they you know moved what? On from Dan Quinn. They didn't fire him. They moved on from him because he yep. chose to leave. He chose to leave. If Dan Quinn decided, no way, well, I want to stay, he would have been welcomed back with open arms. So that's 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 the frustrating part for a lot of Cowboys fans. It's just like no one paid the price, and here we are. You know, you know what was hard about that Green Bay? And uh, guys, please, I'm probably gonna get hate mail after I say this. <laughs> I remember, I remember that day, and I spoke to a few people before, and I said, we're losing that game. Oh yeah. I, I, you know what? Because that team was hungry. Dallas was, went into that game and we were too relaxed and guess what? By the time we realized, oh snap, we got to wake up, we were playing against each other. Yeah. Well, that's what that's where I needed you the most, Sid, because your boy is out there fighting that battle by himself. Like, listen, <laughs> this is a tough matchup that we're going into. Yeah. Like, oh, Green Bay's young. Who have yeah. they beat? Who have yeah. they? I'm just like, listen, y'all. Yeah, listen. And, yep. and honestly, like I said, I slept on Green Bay because of course I don't watch you know teams that deep when you know it's cowboy season. But once I started scouting them, I was like, Oh damn, their quarterback's yep. competent. They have a run game. They have fast wide receivers. He gets the ball out quick. He can throw yep. off his back foot. He can throw off platform. And they run a lot of zone and they learn a lot of pre-snap motion. And they're really like the 49ers version of, of at, at all these. I'm like, uh-oh, you know, we have a problem. So what I was trying to warn Cowboys fans, I just did a video on it because we had an interview with Wanye Thomas. And Wanye Thomas yep. was like, bro, everything we threw at them defensively, they had an answer for. Like everything we try, like everything they had yep. an answer for. And I asked him, why was, did, did he know why that was? And he was like, honestly, no. And I had to explain, right? Matt LaFleur was the quarterback coach for the Atlanta Falcons under Dan Quinn. You know, <laughs> Kyle Shanahan, offensive coordinator under Dan Quinn. Dan so they're Quinn. familiar with your defense. It's like if we play Madden a hundred times, you know, okay, Tuck's going to motion. He's about to throw to C Lamb. I've seen this play a thousand times, right? But if I play Tyrone or someone else, they haven't seen it. It's new to them. But for you, it's like I know what I know what he's doing. So and Dan Quinn just never had the counterpunch. So when Wang Ye was saying, Man, they were motioning a lot. Yeah, because he knows this defense gets tripped up by the motion. So sometimes it was double motion. It was ghost motion. There was jet motion. Like, there was so many different motions because I know that's how I completely blow up your defense and everybody was out of position. Everybody, everybody was out of sync. And you can just see the team just melting after that first drive where I sat back and just like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> you know what? I remember pulling out my fa- my phone and I was like, when's the draft again? <laughs> it, 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 the, yeah. the, worst, the worst part about the whole situation in Green Bay is that we got our, we got dog walked. And then I got yeah. snowed in for Dallas for four days. I was stuck and stranded after. It was oh, hell. I couldn't get back. You know, Dallas gets two inches of snow and everything oh, shuts down. So I'm like, bro, I just want to yeah. go home. Like, you know, it, it was it was it was bad, but it's just like, you know, what are we doing to build off of that? It's like nothing. And I think the biggest problem, Sid, is that the Cowboys won't commit. They won't commit to going all in and just going yeah. all in and push all your chips to the table and saying, F it. If we lose, then whatever. In 2026, we'll just be a horrible team or saying, you know what? Dak Prescott, you're not the guy. We can move on and do better without you and just ripping off that Band-Aid and doing a full rebuild. We're kind of just. Being in the middle, you know, yeah, the middle. We're, we're eight, we're eight undecided, win team. yeah, eight, eight win team, 10 win team, you know, it just, it just, you know, and it's just like, no, bro, you either got to swing this way or just rebuild it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, listen, if y'all don't want to resign Dak, well, let's get rid of them yep. by, to, by next week and go get two first round picks and in a, in a third round pick and make things happen in the draft. But what they're going to do is they're going to sit back, they're going to play games so we get to camp. Dak turns off all negotiations when we get to camp, and we'll sit okay. back and say, here we go. Dak's going to have his back to the wall like he always does. He's probably going to show out again, put up godly numbers, and the Cowboys think they're going to be able to win him back with negotiations next year. And he's going to be like, no, it's I'm a free happen. agent because some team yep. like the Minnesota Vikings is going to be like, oh, we'll take you in a heartbeat. And so there we 100%. go. I think and it's a sad thing to say, but I think Dak would be more appreciated on another team. He would. He he honestly would. And and, that, and that's the thing. Like a lot of Cowboys fans, we kind of started like my guy Rome. 
it's just a free DAC movement. It's because I feel like enough's enough, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's enough. Like year after year, time after time, we were fighting battles for DAC. You know, we remember, right? You remember, oh right? We remember that game when we were live streaming, and when his ankle got hurt versus the Giants, hurt. like that yep. hurt, like that hurt. But it's like the front office plays games with them. The fan base sometimes plays games with them. It's just like, bro, it's a good guy, and and to see it done to a good guy, you know what I'm saying? Like it'd be different, like, man. Yeah, that's arrogant. He's a prick, like bro, like. You know, saying Walter nice. man, like he's done everything the right way in Dallas, and he ju- he always has to get drugged to the mud. And then you see someone like Jalen Hurts when Ganey came off the of Super Bowl, yep. was like paid, or Josh Allen paid, Josh uh, uh, Justin Herbert paid. Like you paid. see all these yep. other quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson paid, and then had a situation paid again, like nothing. You know, but it's like when it comes to Dak, it's like bro, he got to go through hoops. And what the problem is, the Cowboys won't admit. The reason why we are in this situation with Dak Prescott, you franchise tagged him twice. You could have signed him before Carson Wentz and, and Jerry yep. Goff, and you could have possibly moved on like the Rams did, like the Eagles did. You mm-hmm. drug this out. This is nobody's fault but, yo, but yours. But yours. Yeah. You know, so, you know? So let me, you know, and I want to ask you during, after that, I remember that Green Bay game. I want to call you, and I was, but I, I was like, yo, I, I know no Dallas Cowboys fan don't want to talk about that, <laughs> that, that, that game yeah. afterwards. But why do you think Dak and C.D. Lamb were off? I don't know. There was something, right, with the body language of C.D. and the connection. I don't, I don't know what the frustration was. and We never really got that answer, um, why Mike McCarthy had to go down there and try to, you know, calm C.D. down. Yep. I just think overall what it is, Sid, is that the lights get bright and the players just – get out of character like everyone gets out of character and someone asked me this on twitter today it's like think about it when it's the big moments our big stars just don't show up you know what i'm saying like that's 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 what i'm problem like we just never had that game where it's like you know what maybe Dak is struggling okay Dak is playing horrible two interceptions right but mike is going crazy cd lamb is going crazy or tony Waller is going like it's like if Dak isn't playing well everyone just (laughs) <laughs> you know what that's what i that's what that's what i ended up saying i said once green bay started like dominating and the dallas cowboys got fluttered and it didn't know how to react to what was going on mm-hmm. it was like downhill mm-hmm. it's like everybody was like there was no nobody was in sync anymore right you know and they were on the sidelines and it was arguing and it was you know the body language and i was just like we're falling apart they were, they were rattled they were rattled and I think the craziest part about it is, and I was saying this the other day, it's like even as bad as that game was, there was a moment, and maybe it was the Cowboy Reader seat where I was like, is Dak about to pull this off and come back? Because he started, you know what I'm saying? He started to shake he it started, off, but yeah. the defense couldn't get a stop to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like this hold him to a field goal at least. Like, <laughs> Something. You know what I'm but it's just yeah. like, bro, like as soon as we started to heat up a little bit offensively, it was just like wide open touchdown, nobody around him. And it was just it was just a bad game, but I feel like because of that game, the end of the way it was, the Cowboys organization, the fan base, oh, everyone's oh. just disoriented. Like we just don't know, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that's the biggest problem right now. Someone's trying to find someone to blame. I know some Cowboys fans are just blaming Dan Quinn, or it was, it was Dan. Yeah, Quinn, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he he tanked the game on purpose. Now Dan yep. Quinn has had interviews every year since he's been in Dallas in the postseason. But all of a sudden, it was just like he was ready to go, but he came back and was at the Shrine Bowl. So it, was, so it wasn't that. But we just need someone to be able to point at and say it was your fault. We got rid of him. Now next year is going to be better. But I think that's the frustrating part for Cowboys fans is we don't have the answer because we don't know what happened versus they were just more prepared. We got out coached, out executed. Oh, we did. It was we you did. Know, so like, it's just hard. It's hard we to did. accept that. But this is what happened. That's exactly what happened. It, it, you know, and I remember I was talking. I said, guys. Dallas is gonna sleep on Green Bay, yo. They, their their momentum was, and they had nothing to lose. We had more to lose than they did. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So they went out there and they said, "Guys, we have nothing to lose." Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know. I also, I know I got nervous when I saw you know Vegas. A lot of people were slamming big money on Green Bay. I was like, God, they know. Yep. They know something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you gotta lick your wounds and get back into the fight. And I feel like right now the Cowboys is just sitting on sitting in their corner, like we're not gonna fight. I'm not gonna play. I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. free agents. I'm not gonna do nothing. 
because yeah. he got punched in the mouth. And it's just like it's unfortunate because us diehard Cowboys fans who are in this chat and on social media and everywhere who give our blood, sweat, and tears to this, we're the ones who have to suffer. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have yeah. to kind of go out there and we're gonna get some guy who's a you know, a, a old veteran from Detroit who was good back in you know 2019 and try to force him that he's going to be the defensive end disruptor that this Cowboys defense has been missing, when it's just like, I don't know. Salute to my guy, Rome. What's going on with you, bro? Yeah, what's up, Mr. Rome, man? <laughs> Big shout out to my guy. I'm going to definitely get this guy on soon. I'm I'm, I'm going to try and get all three of us, man, even DMV. That'll be a definitely interesting show, but please look out for that. So with that being said, we'll, we'll jump on the DAC talk pick a little bit after, but draft. Well, you know, I, I saw I was watching you and DMV and uh, Mr. Rome the other day, and we we're talking about what's the most important draft position going into this season. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, yeah, good question, right? Because you know, you we're look all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing. We always say like BPA, BPA that makes sense, right? This doesn't grab something, but if you think about it, right? You know, besides you can say quarterback, maybe yep. pull their quarterback, right? Oh, you know, well, but do you think Dallas? But this thing, I, don't I, don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I, it's I, not like we're I, setting. Do you think Dallas is? Do you think there would be that dumb? No, but you I know what? Nothing. Nothing would surprise me with Jerry Jones. I don't. I don't think they would because they've already did it with Trey Lance. So for in their yeah. mind that they already drafted Trey Lance in a fourth round pick, like that's. Like watch, watch, watch post draft after next week. They're gonna say, "Well, you factor in Trey Lance." You know that was part of our draft class. I'm like, no, because they did that with Brandon Cooks and also Stephon Gilmore. Um, but there's a lot of holes, right? So you can go so many different directions. That kind of goes back to the analogy of going to the grocery store hungry because you need a left tackle, or are you can kick Tyler Smith out, but then you need a left guard. Do you need an X boundary wide receiver to replace Michael Gallup? Um, you need a running back. You know, you need linebackers because your linebackers by committee is not going to work and can you really lean on Damone Clark being your linebacker too you need defensive tackles right because you lost Jonathan Hankins you moved on from Neville Gallimore you have Osa yep. but a uh, Mozzie's going to be limited you also need edge rushers right because you need some edge guys because you lost um you know Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong so you need some edge rush or do you need a corner <laughs> do you need a corner because you're going to move on from Stefan Gilmore you need an outside guy because right now you have two inside guys in Deron Blaine and Jay Lou and then you have Trayvon Diggs coming off ace so it's wide yeah, open. I, it's, like, it's, wide, yeah. it's wide open so and that's what scares me because I feel like the Dallas Cowboys can just think too much in their war room and just trip themselves up you know what I'm saying so for me personally I'm team trade back with my dog, Rome, but I'm also BPA. So if a wide receiver like a Brian Thomas Jr. or some of these guys mm -hmm. like Keon Combers are sitting there and they're the best players available, just get it. I want talent. We'll worry about the positioning later. Just go get me talent because I feel like this Cowboys need a shot in the arm just talent-wise. And I feel like the first three rounds said we can't be goofy. You know, last year's round two, goofy year prior, round two, like we kind of get goofy in the in, in the second round. No more goofiness, Will McClay. I need you locked in. First three picks, you have to hit. You go get supreme talent where we're all knowing day one, they are the starters. But we'll have to wait and see next week and see how that all unfolds. So for you, you're, you're thinking best, best, best player available. Yeah, best player available, man. I mean, I mean, the only position I probably say, even though I love him, is like tight end. You know, I would probably be cool on that. But if it's Brock Bowers or somebody, like, you get Brock. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get care. Brock, yeah. Like, you, you, you get the talent. You get the talent. Um, Because what you can do is you can reach for an inferior position while there's better talent on the board. So let's say, for instance, like some of the mocks have been saying, they went and got, um, I think, Tyler Guyton in the first round, right tackle from OU, has minimal left tackle experience, right? So he was the pick. But if you look at the board and the people that was drafted behind him, like a Graham Barton or a Brian Thomas Jr. or, you know, those some of those guys that can really have an impact, you're sitting there scratching your head like, nah, bro, I'm not with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at. Trade back, get more value, get more picks. It gives you more cracks at, at the bat with it. And then you go get BPA and see how the board falls. There's going to be a lot of talent in this draft, especially in that cluster of day two and the later of the first round. Makes sense. You're a big, you're a big draft guy, and I, and that's one thing I, I, 
Never got yeah, into. We came a long way from the pitch train, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, like I said, me, I always wait till draft day, and then when I see who the Dallas Cowboys pick up, then I go and read up and I do a little research. I'm like, eh, okay, or you know. Mm-hmm. So I- I'm looking forward, definitely looking forward to the draft. Um, it's just a, at a weird time. I'm working at 12, man. I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I like since you know, I'm like, oh man, I'm a, I'm gonna have to wait to get some notifications on my phone to see what's going on. Right. But I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to the draft. But like you said, I'm worried because we have too many positions to fill. Mm-hmm. And it seems right now like the Dallas Cowboys are just but we're reaching. Right. And and that's what I don't don't want. Right. And uh it, it's it's gonna be a I just don't want to have another tough man. I already get enough hate from you. Don't understand. Big shout out to my guy, uh, you know Jack and uh, all these guys that I do flag football with. But these guys are always hating on. It's me. hard. And, and it's already they're like, you guys ain't doing nothing. Who right. you guys release half your team? Who would you sign? I'm just right. Like, well, that well, imagine being a Cowboys fan in the middle of Chiefs Kingdom, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying like it's just, I know for it's you, just man. Looking out the window and it's seeing everyone like that Squidward meme, like everyone's celebrating, confetti everywhere, flyers, and just like congratulations again. You know, yeah. a, again, a, a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in 50 years just magically got the best quarterback in football history just fall in their lap and it's, everything has just changed with them where Super Bowl is just, like I literally had friends last year I'm like bro you going to the Super Bowl watch the Chiefs like nah man I've been the I've been the last three years oh okay my bad you know saying excuse yeah, yeah. me you know what yeah. saying? like nah man I'm, I'm a pass man I've been the last three years it's you know so okay. Ma- Matthew has has uh an important statement here somebody gonna draft Trey Benson in the first and the Cowboys are gonna get scared to draft books at 20 yeah I, man i would be shocked if they took brooks at 24 y'all but i agree for for me to have this mentality or for people to have this mentality that no running back is going to go in the first round i just don't think that's the case remember last year we thought it was going to be Bijan, and we were like oh well, you can get, yeah you can get gibbs in the second round absolutely not so sometimes it's just like the grocery store. If you need bread and there's one loaf of bread on there, like I'm just gonna go get the bread. Like go I'm not worried bread. about yeah. the pricing. I'm not worried about the value, how much it costs. I need bread. There's not much left. I'm going to grab the bread. So I think that can be the situation with the Cowboys go running back in round one. I would doubt it, y'all. Doubt I would it. be shocked. Doubt that, would, it. that would be a rib punch where I just exit the live nope. stream. We're just out of here. But you know, I can I see think- them possibly getting Brooks at 56 versus 24. I just think running backs are no longer that position anymore that he used to be. And and that's the thing. It's like I know a lot of Cowboys fans, itself included, want to improve the running back room, but we don't run the damn ball anyway. Well, anyway, you know, like, that, that's that's exactly. we don't run the ball anyways. And so, you know, Dak Prescott probably on a one-year deal. They're going to want him slinging the ball until his arm comes out his shoulder. Uh, so yeah, it's like, man, we, we try run the ball with Zeke or run the ball with Pollard or, you know, I have videos on my channel, use Rico more, use Hunter Lukey and Mike McCarthy's like, absolutely not. So it's like, how much value are you really going to get from a running back? I don't know, but I think it's a need, but I don't think they're going to press on it to be honest with you. So let me, speaking about running back, you know, there's, there's, there's chirps and people are talking about Zeke actually maybe coming back to the Cowboys. <laughs> Why are you moving your mic? <laughs> Jesus, Listen, um, you know, and I just don't know how I feel about that. You know, like sometimes I'm like, yeah, you know what? He'll go get us that first down when we got to run two, three yards. He'll punch it in, you know, get that end zone touchdown that we need if it's on the one yard. But definitely not on the one. Everybody's like, oh, he's going to be your number one running back. No way. That's not happening. But I don't know. I'm torn because I've always you were a big Zeke guy, you know. Uh, mm. You you've always uh, backed him up. I remember back in the day. Not yeah. always. Not not well, on dra- not on drafted. Not when we drafted him. I wasn't. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. I got the so, scar still on my my wrist for you punching the glass window <laughs> when we drafted Zeke. You know? So what would you? How do you feel about that rumor lingering? And do you actually think it's something that's going to happen? It's a possibility. Um, I know a lot of Cowboys fans would be opposed to it. I would be perfectly fine. I'd be perfectly fine yeah. because I feel like he's a Me boost. Too. He's also a veteran leader. And here's what a lot of Cowboys fans don't consider. Death. 
You know what I'm saying? They don't consider depth. It's like, okay, we don't, we don't need Zeke because we got Rico. Okay, cool. What happens if Rico goes down? Then what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. you have to plan we for need. that. You have to plan for hamstrings in camp. You have to plan for those types of things. So if you have Ezekiel Elliott, I know one, he's going to be perfectly fine in pass pro. You're going to be good there. Short yardage back. We're going to be good there. Red zone rushing in the goal line. We're going to be good there. Just give me that. You know what I'm saying? Because the blocker, we, we, he's we, a good blocker yeah, for that. Yeah, good pass pro blocker. So it's like we get those yep. things from him. I can guarantee I can close my eyes. And if it's, you know, fourth and two on the goal line, I know I can give Zeke the ball and he's not going to get stopped by Tony Pollard. You know what I'm saying? Like, so those yep. are some of the things. Like, if you get it, I'm not opposed to it because we don't have it. Now, if I felt like, okay, we had a young bruiser in back and he has the same, it, <laughs> I mean, hell, he might. He might. You know, it's, 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 so, so, so good question, Stevie Mac, or good, good comment, right? You yep. definitely need to add someone like Zeke back there because we ain't got no left tackle. So you have Chuma Yadoga back there, and then you have Deuce Vaughn trying to pick up in pass pro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're just trying oh. to sit back press cut up for failure. So yeah, if Zeke says, you know what, I want to come home, let me finish with my guy Dak. I mean, he has his home in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would welcome Zeke back with open arms. Cowboys fans would complain about it for a little bit, but they will get over it mm -hmm. as soon as we're all saying Zeke and he gets in the end zone because those 13 touchdowns in the end zone was definitely um, missed last year. So no, that's what I'm saying. He's he'll be your get you that first down that you need, and he'll be that end zone in that, that red zone end zone puncher that we need because we didn't have yeah. that last year. Yeah, listen, y'all, we, we tried the tush push, it don't work for us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> like, you know, so like sometimes you just need someone to get those dirty, grimy yards. You know what I'm saying? And if that's all Zeke is, it's just that bell cow back to get those dirty grimy yards. Pass pro and get in the end zone, those two yard carries in the end zone. I'll take it. That's that's a good value for it. But you know, we'll have to sit back and wait and see how the draft unfolds. But yeah, I would welcome Zeke back with open arms. So I would definitely keep that rumor in the back of your minds because I'm hearing it's really that he, uh, yeah, it's really picking up. I, I, it's really possible that yeah, it's, it's a huge possibility. Gonna, why not? And he'll retire from Dallas. I think that'll be and so Tyreek said he's a huge momentum stopper for the young guys. But that's the problem. We don't have no young guy. You know what I'm saying? We don't. Like, yeah, we yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it'd be different. Let's say, for instance, we had a, a Trey Benson, right? We drafted Trey Benson, but all of a sudden, like Zeke is starting over Trey Benson and taking carries away from Trey Benson. Yeah, then I agree, bro. But if Zeke is taking away carries from Deuce Vaughn, I mean, and, and I like yeah. Deuce, and I feel like Deuce is going to take a leap forward, but there's still a lot to work. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no guys behind him that I feel like Zeke could be stopping, whether that's Rico, whether that's Malik Davis, whether that's uh, Deuce, whether that's Snoop. Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Z Tyreek said, where was Zeke when you needed him in a playoff game? No. Where was Dallas last yeah. year against Green Bay in a playoff game? Like, right. honestly. Yeah. Like, you, can't, you can't just attack one player right now. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, and, we, and we do that all the time. Where was so like? Where was yeah. the team? Where where, where yeah. was Michael Gallup? Where was where was Jake Ferguson in the loss versus San Francisco? Where was you know where was our offensive line that couldn't protect Dak up front? Where was like we could play that game all day, so you can't, hey, yeah. pick, you know, because it's it's unfair. It's a team game. It's not like it's basketball, right? You can say where was LeBron tonight? He LeBron didn't show up and do his thing. But like, bro, like sometimes your right tackle just didn't show up, like Terrence Steele. He didn't show up versus uh, oh, the Eagles. You know what I'm saying? He was getting smoked out there. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like it, it, it takes a unit. I think a lot of people just don't understand that. It's not just one person. You know, like it, it, that's just the easy way to place the blame. But it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like it is. Yeah. It, it really is. And honestly, well, when Tony Pollard went down versus San Francisco, we didn't run the ball and give Zeke any touches with Kellen Moore anyway. So, I mean, if you want to ask somebody where it was Zeke, ask Kellen Moore. <laughs> Because he ain't giving the ball. <laughs> he know? ain't giving them the ball. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm with you. I wouldn't be mad. You know, I was thinking about it more, and I'm like, I wouldn't be mad at that idea. He was always he he was always that go to when we needed those yards. So why not? You know. So I'm definitely. Uh, I still have his jersey, yeah. so at least I could brush it off. <laughs> yeah, and, and 21 is probably gonna be available because Gilmore ain't coming back. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Zeke yeah. will definitely get that number back. So. One last thing before we, you know, we usually wrap it up in an hour, but I have an important question. Well, two, two. All right. So let's talk about Mike McCarthy. 
Do you think Mike McCarthy, let's say Mike McCarthy doesn't have a great year this year. Do you think Mike McCarthy will be back next year? So he doesn't have a great year this year? Yeah. No, I don't think he's back. I feel like they've been plotting on Mike McCarthy from the jump. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I thought he'd be gone already. Which is is unfortunate, right? Because we sit back, we watch Jason Garrett give us nothing but mediocrity for over a decade and didn't even consider moving on, right? Mike McCarthy came in his very first year. Dak goes down, tries to keep things afloat with, you know, uh, uh, you know Ben DiNucci and Andy Dalton, yeah. and Eric Gilbert, right? Decent season, but it is what it is. After that, right, you have Dak Prescott plays well. You had seasons where Dak Prescott went down. He still won games with Cooper Rush. They 12-5, and 12-5, and five, winning the division twice, winning up, going on the road and beating Tom Brady in the playoffs. So he's been building. And I feel like we should let him continue to build. But knowing the Cowboys' ego, I can see a situation, let's say, for instance, Sid is right and we miss the playoffs, that they're going to move on from Mike McCarthy. What scares me with that, Cowboys Nation, is it's not that we're going to move from Mike McCarthy and go get Bill Belichick like, and say, no. you know what, Bill Belichick, go fix it. It'll probably be something like, well, hey, you know. Coach Zimmer was a, a former head coach for the Bengals. And, you know, he also coached in Minnesota and he's the leader of this defense. And we can just make him that like it's going to be somebody they have their puppet strings attached to. And when Zimmer had his first press conference, I was all for it till he said this, Sid. You know, my good friend Stephen Jones gave me a phone call. I said, Oh, gosh, gosh, here we go. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> yes, brother, all right, here we go, bro. I was like, here yeah. we go, man. So that's my biggest concern about moving on from Mike McCarthy is would the Cowboys actually have the courage to go get a real coach that can really get us over the hump? Or would it just be another guy that they like and they can kind of bring us in and kind of mold things and do things his way and we continue this continuously cycle that we've been on? So me personally, I would assign Mike McCarthy back last year and gave him an extension, but everybody's on a one-year deal, which typically doesn't work out in a lot of situations. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I thought he was going to be gone this year. I said, oh, there, Mike McCarthy's done. You know, I honestly was hoping that we would have moved away from him because there was other potential better coaches out there that we could have got. Mm-hmm. But we didn't make that move again. Right. And, and I'm just like, OK, so we're going to deal with Mike McCarthy. Here's my dilemma. Do you think, depending on how the Dallas come out in the season, I'm wondering, will Mike McCarthy make it through the whole season? It would have to get dark um, for that to happen. Uh, But typically, I think the Cowboys would let him finish the season, right? Unless there's a guy that they really like in-house and they want to kind of gauge him out before Mm -hmm. the offseason. But I think that Mike McCarthy finishes the season unless we're out there just getting smoked out the gate. But if we're getting smoked out the gate, is it really Mike McCarthy's fault? McCarthy's because fault? Out there and y'all gave him no utensils to cook with. You know what I'm saying? So that's but why I mean, if I'm like, if I'm Mike McCarthy, bro, I'm like, I'm trying to go all in with the spending. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to ball on the, you know what I'm saying? Ball out because if y'all trying to fire me, give me everything that I need to go out my way. But of course, they're not going to do that. So, yeah, you know, I think he finishes the season unless it gets bad. Like we get off 0 and 5 star or something like that. You know, the, the the team that can really break us, right, and really change us is the team in Philadelphia. And I feel like that's the biggest problem for the Cowboys and also the front office, right? Because we see mm-hmm. Philadelphia making all these power moves, but they have yet to leave blood in their mouth. So from the Cowboys standpoint, it's like, oh, we don't have – and Stephen Jones kind of said it. It's like, you know, you see what they're doing in our divisions. Like, you know, they don't feel like, okay, we need to make these moves because Philadelphia hasn't left blood in our mouth because we feel like we can still compete with them. But I'm not trying to compete with Philadelphia. I'm trying to compete no. with the San Francisco. Now the San Francisco 49ers, they have blood in our mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what I'm saying they leave. I'm like, I'm I'm done messing with that. I hate that they're on a schedule again next year. Like, listen, bro, after this year, like you got it, bro. Like, I'm I'm good. I don't want no more. I was talking big and bad online. All right, y'all got it, man. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. That's so the well, team man. My my cousin's a huge 49ers fan, and I was all and my, my other boy Brent, I was all up in their ear. I bet money. We got this. We, we, we there's no way. We're, and man, and man, like, they, man they what there are there <laughs> like, there are kryptonite. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are there are Dallas Cowboys kryptonite. It used to be the Eagles, not anymore. No. 49ers. I don't know what mm. it is. We just cannot function against this team. Yeah, man. Hats off to them, man. Hats up. Listen, 
Yeah. Kudos, but it's, it's yeah. just a team that it's I hate them just as much as I hate the Eagles now. Yeah, some fights you're just not built for, man. As of right now, I just don't see us built for the same friend. We damn sure not built to fight. I, I, right now, you know, if we built to fight Washington, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, San Francisco, I feel like, you know, Detroit, we got Detroit next year. We got the Baltimore Ravens, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got Do you think we won that game against Detroit? Mm, fairly, fairly. Mm, yeah, do we? Fairly? Uh, <laughs> fairly, no. Um, but <laughs> but oh. it was still a W. But that's but that's the problem, right? Think about what happened. We Dallas Dallas did their job offensively, and yep. all they had to do defense had to do was just keep them out from making a full drive up the field to not exactly. score a touchdown, and we yep. let them march all the way. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Our, our defense last year was fool's goal. I know a lot of people saw the sacks, we saw the interceptions. We're like, okay, we're perfectly fine, but we're not as good as we y'all think we are. You know what I'm saying? We saw what happened versus Buffalo. I mean, the Dolphins game was a little bit improved, but every time we played a quarterback that had some moxie about him or that was competent, we wasn't, you know what I'm saying, we wasn't that caliber of team. So, you know, we're going to have to get over that hurdle, but I feel like the good thing about our schedule is that we will know who we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, we won't be able to fake it. I feel like last year we kind of got to fake it, right, because we would lose to the 49ers, but then we would turn around and beat Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So we feel like we're kind of back and lose to Buffalo, but we beat Philly. So there was, like, this mixed emotion. But this year we'll know out the gate pretty much who we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, yeah. just, we'll just know. And it's like, all right, y'all, either let's just start a book club and move on to draft stuff in the middle of the season, or, you know what, maybe we was wrong and this team's actually your serious contenders, but we'll know. We'll see. Yo, big shout out to my man, Mike, man. Mike, so this is my boy. He says, F the Niners prevent my Lions from going to the big one. <laughs> yeah, man. So do we. But Mike here's the crazy assault. part. We, we've we all tried to fight the 49ers. Like, even like, you know, much as we hate the Every Eagles, I was like, buddy. I was hoping the Eagles would beat them. They lumped yep. the Eagles up too, bro. They spanked the Eagles. <laughs> they smacked the Eagles and then. Then uh, Nick Bosa goes on, you know, post game and gives the blueprint of how to beat the Eagles. And everyone starts stomping on the Eagles. It's like, damn, exactly. bro, like the 49ers just been, you know, like we got to like team up and do the fusion dance to beat them, bro. Because I don't know what the hell that's, you know what I'm saying? Yo, they, so, they got, the Eagles had such a rough season. I haven't seen Philly Lotion anywhere, man. man <laughs> it, they, big they shout are, out I mean, to Philly Lotion, man. I spoke to this guy. Lotion, you know? he, he's definitely, he's making his comeback soon, man. I spoke to oh, him. Oh, man. He, yeah, yeah. So he oh, said he yeah. had a rough year. You know, he talking. did. Yeah, I yeah. He was did. talking trash every so often to me, and I was just like, "Yo, you should be talking, bro. Yeah. Your team went like this, and then all of a sudden, crash and burn dramatically. Yeah. They was they you was know? hot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, hot, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So last thing I want to discuss is Dak's contract. We talked about it a little bit earlier. It, it is this something that's gonna get done? Is front office gonna keep playing around with it? And the biggest question I have, will Dak be back, be a cowboy in 2025? Man, it's it's a magical question. I wish I had that, to, to it. If I had to, telling me. If I had to put money on it, I would say no. Yep. I, I that's no. what I've been telling you. I don't I just I just feel like okay, so here we are. Cause I felt like they're gonna try to get the deal done, but Dak has all the leverage and negotiations. And I just don't think that Dak is going to come down off his price to meet the Joneses at where they really want to be met at. And rightfully so, right? Because you slander him, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, you don't feel appreciated for the work that you've done. And so Dak is not going to come down off his price because he's pretty much, he really was, if we're being honest, besides the win column, this, the MVP of the regular okay. season, right? Thank so you. why would you come down on your price? Plus, you look across, you see what Kirk Cousins is getting. You see what other quarterbacks are getting that you're clearly better than, have always been better than. I don't believe he's going to come down on his price. And that's where things are going to get ugly. And like I said, if he's not signed by the time we get to camp, Dak typically turns off negotiations and says, okay, I'm done with it. We'll revisit in the offseason, which scares me because I know if it gets to the offseason next year, bro, I just – I know people gonna toss big money at Dak, and he's gonna be gone. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, to be honest with you, I would love for, I would love for me to be wrong. Um, I would love to do a show. I'm like, okay, we signed Dak. That will give me some peace. Okay, like let's let's see if we got our quarterback. You know, what I'm saying then Ceedee Lamb taking care of. Okay, I'll feel a little bit better. But as of right now, I don't feel good about the situation. To be honest with y'all, it, it's 
they're doing him dirty again, man. That's what I don't understand. Mm-hmm. This guy, you know, he was a face of the, of the Dallas Cowboys. He did so much for the community. He's he was a good QB. He was one of the top. He was in the top five for most yards last year. Uh, I think he had the most passing touchdowns, even mm-hmm. if I remember clearly. I mean, this guy was out there doing what he needed to be done. Why are we constantly playing with this guy's contract? Yeah, it's all it's always a thing of making Dak bet on himself. Do it again. Okay, well, guys, that time we'll do it again. Double or nothing. Do it again. Do it again. So it's like it's one of those situations where you know it's it's just, it's just enough is enough. And I think you know for Dak personally, you know, of course, Dak is always going to hold himself like a leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the Trey Lance thing was disrespectful for him because it wasn't about you know getting a backup quarterback or you know our third string quarterback. We were perfectly fine. With Will Greer being our third string quarterback, especially after you play our last preseason game. So you moved on from Will Greer. You trade a fourth round pick without talking to anybody to get Trey Lance, who doesn't even play a snap last year. What was it really about? It's really about letting you know if I don't come down, they're gonna move on from me and put this kid in. And I just think but it's that's it. And they 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 spit in the wind at Dak and it came back in their face because Dak played his best season in his career, and now it's like all right. <laughs> so it's like, it's just a contest. And here's what I'm trying to explain to Cowboys fans. We're dealing with the same ownership that had the ego to feel like they can win Super Bowls and continuously build championship teams without Jimmy Johnson. They're moving on from Dak Prescott is easy money. You know, like they don't, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't, yeah. you know, like yeah. their ego, like they're, they are so focused on doing things their way and being right versus putting the best product on the football field and putting us in the best situation to win championships. So ultimately, we'll have to sit back and wait and see. I hope I'm wrong, but ultimately, if that happens, the Cowboys fans will pay the price, as usual. Uh, of course. You know what? When they brought in Lance, I was like, there's two things that are happening here. One, they're sending a message to Dak, and they're saying, hey, Dak, guess mm-hmm. what? We have this kid that we're, we, we believe in. If you don't want to come down, like you said, in price, we're going to st- switch our focus to this kid. Yep. Mm-hmm. Second reason, I said, or he's trade bait. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's how I was like. He's gonna be trade bait. Come draft. Come draft time. Well, they didn't. You know, that's They didn't do anything. They they've been no, getting some bait. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, says, he can't. He can't be bait. But I know that's why. But I. That's what I thought back mm-hmm. then when we brought him in. Right. Yeah, I and thought it was Mason awesome. Cooper Rush. Like, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was okay with that. Yeah. And then another thing I said to myself was, if Dak for some odd reason doesn't play the way they need they. Expect that they need him to be playing, guess mm-hmm. what? Then they're just going to say, hey, Dak, take a little benchy bench, and we're going to let Trance take our chances right now with Lance yeah. and what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But it, it didn't happen. Like you said, Dak went out. He balled out. Yep. He had his best, one of his best seasons mm-hmm. throughout his whole career. And like mm-hmm. you're saying right now, he's saying, hey, I know my value, and you guys right. are not going to gonna stop me from getting what i want and rightfully so and any one of us on the show or watching this show would do the exact same if you're at work you're their top sales person you are not you want the same raise as everyone else you're not gonna take less of a raise because the bottom person who's number 10 you know like so that's that's the thing and here is what i really worry about and it's coming cowboys nation whether we want to or not when we get to camp and it's Oh well, Trey Lance had a good day of practice. He was seven for seven. Oh, seven man, man. Drills and he, he his arm is looking strong. It looks like the ankle is healing. Shows some athletic ability on an outside throw when he rushed outside the pocket and tossed the city lamp. And then they're gonna make sure everything is lined up properly for preseason to get the Cowboys fans talking. Well, maybe, maybe if if the if if Jerry and Stephen Jones was selling Cowboys fans the idea of Cooper Rush. Right. Imagine what they're about to do to Trey Lance, man. Watch the, the Ringling Brothers circus that's about to hit us fans. But, you know, it just is what it is. We've got to deal with it. You know what? I applause. I, I applaud Dak on that because I remember seeing an interview with him and he was just like, this is the business, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you want me to say? You know, yeah. this is this is the business that we're in. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know what? I'm going to help. him. You know, and I remember him saying, I'm going to help him out. Mm-hmm. Good kid. I have nothing against him. Yeah. Just like just like any good person would do. And that yeah. that just goes to show you his mentality. Yeah, he said I'm not surprised by anything they do anymore. That was literally his words, right? But Dak is and here and here's Dak is such a strong leader. 
his dumb butt is out there at voluntary practice right now. On a one -year deal. Like, <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? Did you see? Did you see? He looks good. His arms yeah. are shot. His, his but, legs and, are. Mar I'm and, like. And so there's, okay. a, there's a part of me, as much as I love Dak, I'm like, well, you're a fool from letting them play you like that every year because they know you're going to show up. Like, bro, you're literally at voluntary. Like, Micah Parsons isn't even at voluntary. Like, who goes to voluntary camp and you're on a one year Did deal you there? out there running line drills with everybody else? And all it's going to take is for one little injury to be like, oh, well, see, well, well yeah. And so, so CD Lamb's holding out. Yeah, CD Lamb doing. It. Zach Martin did it perfectly fine. Zeke went to Cabo. Micah Parsons playing on to do it next year. So if you want your money, you can't play along with them and go the nice route. You might just have to sit at home a little bit. You got your own. You got your own football yard, your own house, bro. You don't need to be out there at volunteer. You don't need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Be, yeah you, you, just, you can literally call CD like, listen, bro, don't. Go to voluntary camp. We're gonna practice at my career. You and Mike, yes. can meet me. you and Mike can meet me in the backyard here in a little bit. So, you know, <laughs> can't be easy having to deal with their owner always interfering, like adding ketchup to my mom's cooking. Never, ends never, well. never ends well, bro. Never, never ends, never well, ends well. Yeah, man. So, with that being said, your last last question before we end this show: seeing Dallas Cowboys lineup. I know it's early. Mm -hmm. I always do this to you, and I know you're gonna be like, "Man, don't ask me that now, man." I know you're gonna, I know what you're gonna ask me, but I'm gonna ask you anyways. Going into the season right now, before the draft, what do you think our record is gonna be? And and we're gonna go back and watch this at the end of the season to see how off we are. All right. Well, I'll say this. So right now in Las Vegas, the over and under for Dallas Cowboys wins is ten and a half wins, so pretty much eleven to win money. And listen, Cowboys Nation, I know we love our team, but I love my money even more. So I would say probably 10 wins. I would take the under. I will. I take, I've taken the under. And uh, you can parlay that with the Eagles winning the division, too, because right now the Cowboys are the favorites. But listen, man, you know what I'm saying? It's don't know. Nothing we don't know. It's nothing personal. It's just business, right? Well, here, well, here's the simple bet, right? Even if it's not the Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboys were handed the division last year. When's the last time that there's been a back-to-back -back NFC East champion? It's been it's years. Years. So, years. So automatically. So since the Cowboys are the favorite, you pretty much can scratch that off the ticket. You know <laughs> and the Eagles, while they're still the underdogs, and I would take the under and parlay together and enjoy your Christmas. So it's like, so that's what I'll say for right now. But we'll see how the schedule outlines. We'll see what they do in the draft and free agency. But I'm taking the under on the 10 and a half easily. Not okay. taking, tooken. I've already taken it. So, so you know. Is what it is. I'm um, I'm at, at twelve and four. What are you talking about, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at nine. I'm at nine and eight. There you go. At, looking at the lineup right now, looking at our roster and where we're at, and, and like I said, this might change come after draft and training camp and all that. And so we're definitely gonna see what's going on. Yeah, Jay, man, I know you have guys. Go on, check this guy out. He has a big draft day coming up. I know you, you guys. Mm -hmm. You. Guys, whole bunch of you aren't you let them know yeah man so we're gonna do i've been doing a draft show on cfo sports man cfo draft show man it's gonna be a lot of different guests popping in and out man a lot of y'all favorites i'm um, jumping in out just breaking down the draft man so we'll be live day one and day two of the draft and just doing what we do best man and hopefully you know our dallas cowboys will pull things out and you know and, and cheer us up a little bit but we shall see man but it's gonna be a fun day draft day is one of my favorite days so we live stream i might live stream like for a lot on thursday and then also oh, yeah, Friday. Sure. So, so yeah but until then man we got draft shows coming up got some film breakdown i mean i'm pretty much broken down everybody needs to be breaking down since we no one else really talk about unless some day three guys but yeah man drafts always fun come over there for the content at cfo sports listed below man appreciate the support yeah man i appreciate having you on man guys please subscribe to this guy's channel if you haven't already and likewise Definitely subscribe to his channel man get my yeah. boys sit back in the game man so <laughs> Well, I'll get there, man. I know what work needs to go in, but I appreciate you definitely coming on. Uh, I hope the Dallas Cowboys have a great season. I'm back. We're definitely going to do some post shows, pre shows, all that stuff. You know how it is when we lose, we get together that yeah, <laughs> the next day. We're like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I, haven't gone, I haven't gone back and watched that Green Bay game at all. So it's like, uh, it's, me it's neither. All, it's all a blur, me. man. Neither. I used, and I, in, I used the men in black uh light like just race my mind. <laughs> so, like, it never happened, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't losing no Packers, bro. I don't know about you, but when we lost, I turned off my phone. 
Well, it was the craziest feeling, man, because I went live as I was walking out. Because I was like the one of the last people to walk out the building. I just sat there until security was like, all right, man, you got to go. Oh, and so I'm sitting there and I'm coming out. I'm not sure if you saw it, Sip, and I'm like raging on my phone, like going like live. But then all of a sudden, a guy taps me and, and it's like Mark Cuban. You know, so oh. it's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so like, it's like, it's crazy. Like, oh, it's, it's Mark Cuban. So I'm sitting there. So I turn the, I turn the live stream off. I talked to Mark Cuban for a minute. And it's like it was like it was like one of those things where I'm pissed off, I'm frustrated. The damn we had tears in my eyes, but then it's like, oh, you meet you know someone you watched, and yeah, yeah, looks like Mark Cuban. So it's like it's like it's wow. just different, you know what I'm saying? So it's a crazy experience. Then it started to snow, you know what I'm saying? So it was just it's just yeah, man. But uh Green Bay game wasn't good. I remember just going to the bar at halftime and just like not not wanting to go back out there, like bro, I'm done with this fight. I just want to just kind of just sit here for a minute, you know. Um yeah, it was bad, man. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I like, won't, you want to make it a double, like man, make it a triple. I don't know. Hit me over the head with the auto. Like, oh no, bro. Stop <laughs> take, <it."> like, <laughs> take me out my misery. Please. Yeah, this is like, dr- tell me I'm well, dreaming. <laughs> it, it, it was so you, know, you never been like in a place where like you're drinking and like you can't even just get drunk. Not even getting drunk anymore. The drink's not even working, bro. You're just miserable. <laughs> like, just get me up out of here, man. So you know, and I'm sitting yeah. there being, uh, you know, trolled by a bunch of people with cheese blocks on their heads, man. It's just like, bro, like this is pitiful. <laughs> yeah, people still, people still definitely talk to me about it, and I'm just like, yeah. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk yeah. about it. Right, so let's move forward, man. Exactly. And that's it. And that's that's what we're looking at, man. So I want to do a big shout out to BuzzFit Gym, man. Uh, huge supporters of my channel. So big shout out to BuzzFit, um, my guy. You know, I got a few guys that are huge supporters. Jack Conrad. And my guy CJ, big thank you to those guys, and thank you for coming on the show, Jay. Man, definitely subscribe to this guy. Tell them where to find you, Jay Tuck. Man. Yeah, man, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Jay Tuck one five one, and then once again, my YouTube channel is CFO Sports. Uh, come over there, give us a like, give us a holler. We're doing videos of Cowboys, a lot of draft content. Um, you can also follow me on ESPN Radio here in Kansas City with my guy Darren Smith every Saturday oh, yeah. morning. And then, yeah, man, we're just just working, man, staying busy, staying on the grind, man. But after uh, after the draft, said I'm going on vacation. I'm going to the beach. I'm getting me a drink. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I I need a break. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need a real break, man. So. Bro, I just started and I'm already taking a break after the draft, May 12th. Yeah. Your boy Sid's gonna be in Thailand. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thailand. Man, Thailand, Thailand's amazing. Going to Thailand for three weeks. Spending that's lot, gonna be man. huge. Over yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll be streaming from there. I'm bringing my gear, man. I already have yeah. a bag. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely man. gonna go live from Thailand on the beach somewhere, so definitely be on no the lookout time, for that. So, deaf guys, check me out. Um, my Twitter is your boy Sid. Um, my YouTube channel is Dallas Cowboys, the number four life. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Big things coming, man. Jay, I appreciate you reaching out and being the first one on my show again nice. when I'm making my comeback. I appreciate you so much. So, guys, like I said, be sure to tune in, stay safe. This is Montreal, Canada's own. It's your boy, Sid. Thanks for joining. Speak your mind all the time. Peace.